Hey there, welcome back and thanks for joining me. My supplies and equipment are listed down below in the description box and most of them have links so check that out. And if you like this video, hit that subscribe button and if you want to be notified of future videos, hit that notification bell. So what I've done here, and this is a mixture I've worked with in the last few videos, I've absolutely loved it. And I think because it's more opaque and, and just doesn't have that transparency look to it. It's a little thicker looking. So what it is, is I put a couple of drops of ink down and then I add the Pinata Blanco Blanco, a, a two or three drops to that. And sometimes you can add a little alcohol to make it uh, travel a little farther, be a little um, uh, less opaque, or just do the ink and the white and that's it. So that's what I'm doing mostly here. And I've, I'm trying to make these look like some leaves so they have different um, angles to them. And this brown one, there was something kind of wonky about the middle of it. I ended up doing the middle, but you can do that. And it just looks like another layer, so it's pretty cool. And here I'm putting down the ink, and then in the other bottle I have put into a needle-nosed type bottle is the Blanco Blanco. And I'm just taking this Tim Holtz blowing tool and just blowing out the petals. And you can do this very lightly and make really large round petals, or the faster you go, the harder it blows, then it will shoot them out a little bit farther. So it's a really fun tool to have. I had it for a long time before I tried it, and once I've tried it, I've, I've just really enjoyed it. So I encourage you to get that. It really opens up a lot of different techniques for you to use in your art. So I continue with the putting down the ink and putting down the Blanco Blanco until I have all the shapes and colors that I'm wanting for the leaves. And you can put as many leaves as you want to or just do one big leaf if you want. So I just continue with this same technique until I have the four leaves done that I'm doing.
So I have all my leaf shapes in place and I'm wanting to put stems for some of the leaves and go ahead and take your markers and swatch them out on the paper that you usually use them on. So I've swatched these out on the photo paper and I use them on the photo paper. And that way you can quickly see what colors you're wanting to use and, and how they're gonna look on that paper because they're gonna look different on a different type of uh, paper like the marker paper or something like that. And so they do not necessarily match the lids. So you wanna swatch these out, it save you a lot of time. And so I've picked out some that kind of goes, the colors kind of go with the leaves color. And I've put in just a couple of stems to make it look like you've kind of picked a bunch of leaves up and you're holding them by the stem. Look how pretty those leaves and the blowing is. It just really adds a lot of dimension and there's a lot of value in that. So it's it's really a cool technique and I really encourage you to try it. I think you'll like it. So I am going in here and I'm, I'm thinking I could take a brown and I could put in the veins or the bigger veins at least of the leaf. I thought this would be, this would be a good thing. If I don't like it, the worst thing I do is cover it up. And sure enough, I am not thrilled with it. Um, I, I, I just, I don't know. It just, it didn't work. It was too, I think I was trying to make it too much uh, kind of realistic when I need to just make it playful and obviously not trying to be realistic. So I go ahead and put some more ink down and I put some more of the Blanco Blanco down and cover it up and it worked great. I was, I'm very excited to know that you can mess up and still cover it back up with this. So it is opaque enough to cover all the ink and it, it did well. So I was excited to learn that little trick.
So here I'm thinking, go for the white. You know, when, when all else fails, white usually does pretty good. And I, I definitely want this outlined. While it's pretty like it is, it just, it needs something. And uh, I've enjoyed doing the outlines. I do those in watercolor a lot uh, because watercolor tends not to have really harsh lines sometimes. And I like the abstractness of it that it doesn't follow the color lines of the paint. You get outside the lines, you just, it's very indicating. Uh, abstract type thing and so I've gone in here and I'm kind of playing I'm really approaching this kind of gingerly to not get too far that I can't correct it if I needed to so I'm starting to put some lines in and I am kind of liking that and so that that's working out well and I go ahead and do that in all four of the leaves So at this point, I'm deciding I'm playing. I want to make some whimsical leaves, so I start to draw the outline. Now, I'm not staying with the outline of the color. I am drawing my own little leaf however I want it, and the viewer is going to understand that's a yellow leaf, that's a green leaf, and they're going to understand that it's, it's fun, and it's light, and it's whimsical, and we're not taking ourselves seriously here. So just go ahead and have fun. Draw any type of leaf you want and just have fun with it. Now, after I've outlined everything in the brown, and normally I use black, but I chose to use brown on this picture, um, I've gone in with the white and kind of put it up against the brown a little bit to kind of make both of them kind of pop a little bit. Uh, so that's what I'm doing here is I'm just going along everywhere I put the brown. I'm also running white along beside it. So I hope this gave you some good ideas and maybe taught you a new technique or two that you can start using in your creative art. And I hope y'all go and have some fun with this.